Robots in the digital era. That's what Liz Buchanan and Shara Evans are talking about this week in Future Talk. It's episode number two in regards to robots. So welcome, Shara. Hello, Liz. So good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, it's obviously a lot warmer in Brisbane than it is in Sydney. I'm all rugged up. <laughs> There's a little bit of a wind, but um, it's getting warmer. It's starting to get summery. Yay, I think we'll all be happy for that. So we're going to continue talking about robots. What do you say? Fantastic. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen and show you a robot that is a prototype robot from Rutgers University and it's being trialed right now. This robot is able to take blood from your arm using um, ultrasound types of scans to find the veins and built into this robot so it's not just taking blood like a human would but built in is a centrifuge so that it can actually analyze the blood as well. So this is still very much a prototype, but there are other robots that are also being deployed around the world that are not prototype robots. They're commercially available. And in fact, a story I read a little while ago indicated that in Spain, they will be deploying about four or five robots, I think it was, that are capable of doing about 80,000 blood tests per day, which is a wow. huge number. And when it comes to stopping coronavirus, we definitely want to have tests back as fast as possible and be able to identify when people have the illness as quickly as possible. So I think this is yet another really good application mm -hmm. for how robots could be used in a way that's complementary to the work that humans use, humans do. But I should also add that there are other technologies that can be used to help take the pain out of getting blood tests. One of them is augmented reality glasses, and these are commercial, where it uses multispectral light to let a person have Superman type of x-ray vision, where they can literally see the vascular system of somebody's arm or leg and know exactly where to put a needle. But um, there are some amazing advances when it comes to the technologies that we have available to us to help us fight the good fight against the pandemic. So let's go on to the next robot. So I'm going to go back to sharing. Okay, here we are. These are robots that are capable of doing temperature scans. And what these robots do is you can see they have wheels and they're mobile. There are a number of manufacturers that have this type of robot and they're commercial already. And they are able to use sensors to detect people's temperature from a distance of about five meters away. And one of the robots I was looking at is able to scan 10 people at a time within that five meter radius. They also have the capability of doing facial recognition. So again, it depends on the particular model of robot that you're using, but that allows one to correlate the identity of the person who has the fever with who they are. And they also, um, some models have the ability to detect whether or not a person is wearing a mask. Now, in that situation, obviously they could detect the fever, they can detect the mask or not the mask, but I think doing the facial recognition would be quite a bit harder when somebody is in fact wearing a mask. 
it just it just reminds me of Doctor Who and that little robot that says exterminate, exterminate. Um, <laughs> we don't want any of privacy those. concerns as well, you know, of what's happening. You're getting everything monitored. You're getting facial recognition. In some regards, I think we do need to keep up with privacy concerns in relation to that. But yeah, I mean, but I can see it's fantastic in fighting and making it um, making everything more efficient. But it's also a bit scary. Well, speaking of robots that look like Daleks, I've actually seen a robot security guard that could be an identical twin for a Dalek. All it would need to do is have out of his loudspeaker speaking exterminate, exterminate, and what? <laughs> and then there are other disinfectant robots that spray things out, and they're like miniature tanks. And the nozzles where the disinfectant comes out also reminds me of the nozzles from the Daleks. <laughs> Instead of doing a human zapper, it's actually a disinfectant zapper, which is kind of funny. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the world of robots is yeah. just exploding. It's such a huge industry. So now I'd like to talk about the last robot for today. And I'm going to share my screen again. And it will probably, once again, not want to cooperate 100% with me. So another robot that is really interesting and I think very useful when we have people who are in a hospital setting for a long time are robots that can assist with physical therapy. And this is a picture of a, ro a robot called Robert from a company called KUKA. And it's a physical therapy robot. So if you can imagine that you're stuck in a hospital and you've got coronavirus, but maybe you also have some other injury, it may be dangerous for a human physiotherapist to do the work that they normally would do with you. So having a robot that can help you through the motions can be really, really useful. And even if you don't have a limb that is injured or broken, just lying in a bed for an extended period of time is definitely not good. And having a robot that can assist with physical therapy in a way that does not endanger any healthcare workers, I think is beneficial as well. Yeah. Yeah, I can see huge benefit for that one as well. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do everything, but um, it's certainly a great start for um, keeping muscles going when when you need to. That's right and again I'm of the view that robots should be used as an adjunct to the activities that we humans do not as a replacement for humans and that we shouldn't be firing people we should be letting them do things that are of higher value or more interesting or less dangerous. Perfect. That's absolutely correct. And that's, we, we're going to change our jobs. We're going to change everything. But um, I think computers and AI and technology is going to enhance our, enhance our jobs, which is all, all that you've been saying over the last couple of years, really. Well, it has a double-edged sword to it because it really depends on how a robot or any technology is deployed, whether it's used to replace a job or augment a job. And we need to be very conscious of the decisions that we make and what we automate and making sure that we're not putting people out of work. So I think we're out of time, Liz. We are, but that's the perfect ending for today's talk. So thank Thanks. you, Sarah. You're welcome. See you next week. See ya.